Welcome to the Numbers Game. I'm Jason. I'm here with Nick and Marty. How you going, guys? Mate, I've got a bit of a man flu. I've got a man flu. I've got to grow a set. I've got to get better. But uh, I'm here. I'm bashing through a paper bag and uh, you know, the show must go on. So, But feel a bit better today, lads. Nick, how are you? Better than me? I don't know. Um, I hope so, because you're not feeling that good. Uh, but I'm good. I'm jacked on coffee, to be honest. And this could be something for you, Marty, given you're a bit um, bit under the weather. But I listened to an Imperfects podcast over the weekend, and they had a a, a guest on, Professor, Professor Tim Spector, uh, who's written a book on um, the microbiome and the importance of you know gut health and all this sort of thing, which we know. But one of the things that he said was coffee is great for gut health. Um, people really? only think about the caffeine side of things, but the cocoa leaf or where coffee comes from um, is, yeah, really good for your gut. Uh, is really that without milk, though? Uh, he drinks it black, but um, oh, there's a whole raft of things he was going into, you know, or, you know, I would suggest full cream normal milk is okay. Yeah, his whole philosophy is around um, you know, not drinking or, or eating things that are meant to be healthy for you, you know, like light milk or sugar-free. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the one big takeaway from me was game on with coffee. He drinks five cups a day, as long as it doesn't keep you buzzing all night and staring at the ceiling. Um, but, yeah, that was it was good to hear that because we only hear the opposite. First time I've been crook this year, so I'm pretty happy about that. So maybe the coffee's the thing getting me over the line. Maybe. We'll have more. Jace, what are you drinking? What are you drinking at the moment? Just Kofco. Just Kofco. I don't know if we've done another <laughs> plug on Kofco lately, but I, I just basically injected into the veins black coffee, short blacks um, from kofco.com.au. Uh, if anyone hasn't been on that website to check it out, I'm pretty sure there's a numbers game discount code floating around as well. So if you need your cheap coffee, We're let still us waiting know. on our samples, mate. So hey, they're, they're they're in the office. You guys haven't come in for a podcast recording in person. I've got like eight bags for you guys. It's out of control. There's I thought it was really? piling up. one one plug equaled one bag of coffee beans. So yeah. far, one plug zero. So send 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 me your address. Do you have a grinder at, at, at the uh, innovate office? I'll oh, oh, I've got one at home. No, I've, I've oh. got one at home. Done. I know where you live, Nico. I'll, I'll bring some bags of uh, Kofco's finest Melbourne roasted coffee beans around. There's one called Bayside. I reckon that'll be up your alley. It's a bit smoother and, you know, just, just reminds me of you, Nick. Smooth. Um, to- talking of uh, how we are, I'm uh, c- currently always training for the next marathon or half marathon. So um, trying to keep the old body um, ticking along nicely with the hips and knees. Um I think uh, Greg's going for a PB half marathon shortly, and then I think we'll have uh, another full marathon early next year. He's he's actually going for the global six marathons at some point over the next couple of years. So I think that's Boston, New York, London, Tokyo, Berlin, and Chicago. I think makes the global six. So in in one year? No. So I think it's just he just wants to tick off having done the okay. global six. But I think yeah. he'll do them. I don't think I'm going to allow that much uh, leave to be processed. Say. I mean, I, I'm the one who gets to do all the the traveling around. So Greg Greg's uh, often stuck at work uh, while I'm gallivanting around. So no, it'll be over a couple of years, I think. Um, but I keep telling him that I'm coming with him. I'm going to do it at the same time. I won't qualify because I won't have the times he has. And I don't know if he thinks I'm joking or not, but I'm dead serious about coming along to it. Like, someone's got to carry his bags to the starting line, tie his shoes for him, and then I'll just do the charity entry because um, you can't get in without doing a charity entry or having a qualifying time. So good fun. And uh, that's yeah, good. that's that's just, just what's been going on at my end, guys, just keeping it, keeping it simple. Pound the pavement. That's it. I think um, – since I've already banged on about it, I'm just going to say today's episode was brought to you by Kofco. Enter the numbers game at checkout and you'll get 30% off. Um, so, yeah, keep that posted. And that's that's me done. I'm just, just cheeky plugs. But Nick brought up the coffee. And um, today we're going to throw to you, Marty. What's, what's happening? Well, I'm glad you've been talking about marathons because that's a part of what I'm talking about today. Uh, seamless transition, Jason. Seamless. Uh, I wanted to talk about building businesses with integrity. Uh, and the way it starts is the way it ends. And uh, recently we had the Sydney marath- Marathon in, um, in New South Wales, and it was the country's biggest marathon. So 17,000 runners, 
You didn't get there, Jace, for that one? Uh, no, it's on next year's cards, and they're actually trying to get, they're trying to get that added to make it the seventh global major. Um, so that's that's their they're attempting to. Um, I don't know if I saw a little. I saw the news articles popping up after it was run and the lines to the toilets, and it was making worldwide news about being horrible and a disaster. And the, I think it was a heat like thirty degrees on the day, and people were dropping like flies. People couldn't get to use a toilet. Yeah, it was. Apparently, uh, didn't do very well for uh, putting their best foot forward to become the seventh global major. So, oh well, there's there's work to do. Race director Wayne uh, Larden will be listening to this and no doubt trying to tick those boxes. The he is trying to get um, uh, the marathon to be the first platinum labelled status marathon, like Boston, New York, in the Southern Hemisphere. So that's one of his goals. Uh, but. What was really interesting, Melbourne Melbourne had the previous record, by the way, in 2019, 8,100. So they've smashed that wow. in runners in Sydney. So, yeah, bigger is better. And uh, hopefully it's uh, five different races for various different capabilities. So I think it's got uh, somewhere to go. But there's a fair difference, let me tell you, between the platinum labelled standard and the gold standard because I was doing some reading on it. Uh, the Mexican Marathon. I don't know if you've heard about this, lads, but mass cheating on the gold label status Mexican marathon, a staggering 11,000 runners out of the 30,000 person field were disqualified after they cut some part of the course out during the 26.2 mile race back in August the 27th. So yeah, so they were, they were missing the 5k checkout points. Uh, some runners were using vehicles or public transport to cut the cost. Okay, what's going on here in this marathon? Um, they say the Mexico City Sports Institute informs that they will proceed to identify those cases with participants uh, to ensure that it's unsportsmanlike attitude and they will invalidate their time. Apparently there was one person that come in like just just probably a plumber or someone that, uh, you know, running their first marathon come in 20 minutes uh, within the world record. <laughs> so, you know, this, <laughs> it's like he did get disqualified. So, but it's, um, yeah, so people have said their trackers are faulty. Uh, all sorts of things are going on. And then I, I come down a little bit and I go, it all starts from the top, right? So there's a history in Mexico City with widespread cheating. So back in 2017, they had 6,000 runners that were disqualified, um, and I think it was 3,000 were punished. Um, but this is an ongoing problem, and it continues to escalate as the marathon gets bigger. So you've got the former Mexican president, um, Roberto Madrazo, I think his name's pronounced, uh, was caught cheating at the 2007 Berlin Marathon and he thought the 11,000 who were disqualified for cheating were innocent. He said, your program should know that not everyone who signs up for a marathon intends to finish it in the way it should be finished. Many take advantage of the route and gain logistical support um, in running a marathon. I know this, he said, because I've run 65 marathons. So talk about it coming from the top, right? So I just can't believe this. I just, in my head, I'm just saying, it's like Mr. Bean, almost people running off in chariots and on the train and anything just to get, just to get a good time. And it reminds me of this American author, uh, Ashley Brilliant, had this great quote, I either want less corruption or more chance to participate in it. And I'm going, <laughs> these types of ideas is no doubt what was happening uh, in the Tour de France days. We're going, hey, everyone's cheating. Nothing to see here, nothing to see here. And I thought, in business, that opportunity presents as well. And this is the angle I want to take because I, I go, there's always those clients. If you don't clearly define your own standards of integrity in business and set up your own parameters, there are always people that will look to take liberty and test them and take you down a dangerous path where you could put your profession on the line just for the benefit of someone that wants to do that. So I think it's a really important message to go, just because everyone's doing it doesn't mean it's right. So well done to Australia for at least having, you know, maybe 100% less cheats 
So that's that's the first thing I'll put out there. So I'll throw it over to you boys first. What what are your thoughts on that? Well, like so I'm surprised, but I'm actually not. I'm just trying to think of the what 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 are they gaining out of out of that? Like, I'm sure these people weren't really going for uh, world records because they know that they will they'll be found out. So this is probably just I'm assuming everyday punters. You know, yeah, like uh, everyday people, you or me. Like, what? Why would you bother? <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't get it. But um, anyway, I guess yeah, you're only cheating yourself. Is that the is that the way to look at it? I don't know. Well, that that's right. But apparently, it uh, it must feel good to have a certain time under your name. Jace, yeah. you run them. What What yeah. are you thinking? What's going on here? Well, the the problem is that I'm a, I'm a data and stats man, so I'll be looking at my Strava, going, you know, if if I ran a marathon and it finished in forty two point one, when I know a marathon's forty two point two, I'm doing the extra hundred meters, even if I've crossed the finish line, I'm I'm getting the extra hundred meters so that my Strava actually shows that I finished the marathon properly. Um, so same thing with the timing chip, like I'm I'm looking at the road for the timing chip thing on the road to make sure that I'm crossing over it, so it picks up my time. Um, um, so, you know, if somebody was on a bike or a scooter and was dragging me along and it threw my average splits out, I don't know, just, it, it just, Marty, it doesn't work. I think cult, like culture wise or, ha- you know, being surrounded by that, maybe they, maybe it's a fun game, you know, culturally. And, and when you're surrounded by other people that are cheating, you jump on the bandwagon. Cause when 11,000 people do it, you might see somebody else jumping on the back of someone's bike going, you know what? I'm, I'm 30 Ks in. I'm a bit knackered right now. A, a little 5K breather on the back of a scooter is probably not a bad option right now. <laughs> you, yeah, know, so you, know, you know that thing? Like you, you, like there's that many people doing it that it probably, it probably feels like, okay, more people joining because there's that many people doing it. Whereas – It'd be so frowned upon, like, you know, um, we ran, Greg and I ran the Gold Coast Marathon a couple of months ago and, you know, just how serious everyone takes it, you know, the way people rock up, the way people prepare, I couldn't imagine cutting a corner or doing that. And that's, that's the integrity side and, and my own, yeah, my own battle with myself, but like, or, or challenge to myself, but also out of respect for the other runners around you as well. You you just get out there and do it properly. So Yeah, it kind of makes you think if these people were actually in it because they were avid marathon runners or as to your point, Jace, they were just there for the event and to have a good time and the quickest they could get to the end, happy days because they didn't really care what time they ran. That's that's what it says to me. But um back to the Australia this the Sydney one, how like look at some of the events that Sydney have held. How could it how could they get it so bad or so wrong. Like, I don't know whether, you know, the 30, de- 30 degree day popped up out of nowhere, whether the heat also caused a lot of issues for people trying to overhydrate and then more people needing the toilet at the same time. Uh, uh, I yeah. Would, I would bit of... think the heat would mean less requirement to go to the bathroom, no, <laughs> yeah, ma- no matter maybe. what you were taking in, right? So true, it's true. But, and particularly if they've obviously had plans of being one of the, one of the seven, um, Obviously, this didn't, you know, this didn't come about in the last few weeks. So it's just interesting that they didn't nail it, you know, knowing that the whole world would be watching. Twenty six people hospitalised. Um, yeah, I mean, look, that's a, that's a heat thing as well. But um, when you think about it, though, of of anywhere in Australia that could be the one to make the global seven or, or to add on to a platinum, Sydney's got it right. Like you've got the Opera House, the Harbour Bridge, the the water there, like. It is picturesque. Um, speaking to someone who did it, though, they said it was surprisingly way more hilly than they expected as well. Um, so that that also adds to the challenge of whether people want to travel all the way to Sydney to run a hilly marathon if it's not going to help them achieve a good marathon qualifying time to get into the other ones. So I don't know. These are just the things that go through the, the minds of marathon runners. So how do you equate that to what was going on in the Tour de France? Like when... The behaviours poor across the board, like let's say in that Mexico situation, that it's okay, it seemed okay to um, to do these things that shouldn't be done. Like, I, I mean, I don't know if you've seen, you've obviously seen people that try and, you know, steal someone else's homework and do it that, you know, try and get ahead that way. And, and this, does, this does happen, but, you know, obviously it gets it gets sorted out. And that's why I think regulation is a really good thing. Like to me, sometimes it's regulation is when it, when an industry grows up, like it sets rules, 
uh, it, it sets collective rules that everyone abides for for the betterment of the industry. So sometimes, you know, it can be frustrating because it means more logistical work and uh, more paperwork in many ways it takes away from servicing clients. But um, it just goes to show you the importance of regulation and what happens if that's not there. Then, you, then you're just leaving up to people's own self-values and you're hoping that their self-values are okay. But I, I just found, find that uh, really really interesting because th- we see that with weightlifting in the past and you know mm. people doping and all sorts of different things it's amazing what people will do to get an edge up well i think it comes like it comes into what to jace's point before around mexico it, it's it's what's normal right and you think about the tour de france those guys didn't know any different and you know they they came in they came into teams and that's just what was done if you wanted to be part of the team so Unless you had a really strong moral compass and were prepared to pretty much walk out of the team, which means walk away from your dream, you weren't doing it. But if you go in there, you don't know any different and superiors are telling you that this is what you've got to do. Otherwise, you don't do anything. You're off the team. I think most people, myself included, will go, okay, well, that's what we do. That's what's on the tour. So juice me up and let's go. So I don't know. I think I think it's just, it's it's normal for some people, unfortunately. And I think that's obviously evolved over time, but maybe the Mexican marathon hasn't, hasn't evolved yet. I don't know. Well, I think it's, I think it's important in business and in anything you participate in to self-regulate. And I think, um, you know, set, set your own standards, be known for the integrity of dealings that you want to deal. Cause there was, there are some people out there, like it doesn't happen anymore so much, um, particularly in our industry, but it used to happen when the industry first started. And it um, was the norm, mate. It, it, it was it, the it, norm. Yeah, and it was because that's what people came into the industry thought was done. Um, yeah. And it's, simp- it's you think back now to some of the things that people got in trouble for, you're like, how did you even think that was okay? Yeah. Um, so it's... It's what you know. There'll always be some that will want to get personal gain to your expense and happy to put your career on the line in order to do so. And don't put your career on the line for someone that wants to uh, do that. And particularly when businesses are young and they need the money, uh, it's really important to set your own standards because what you set is what you'll then attract ongoing. Because I know even in the early days, there were some dodgy figures that came to me and I just refused to deal with them, even though I really could have utilized the, with the money from those deals um, because I knew what would happen was, and I explained that to the rest of the team as well, what will happen is you get one, you get them all and that becomes the clients you're dealing with and that's a dangerous, dangerous place. So again, whatever industry you're in, even if it's unregulated, Make sure you self-regulate and set your standards of integrity for all dealings that you live up to and then allow that to attract the clients that you want to be dealing with. And don't let people compromise that because if it is, then all of a sudden, you know, you've got people winning marathons riding in cars, right? So, yeah, so think about the clients you want to be dealing with. Brokering industry has come through a big lot of changes and there are a lot more cowboys in it in the early days, so I'm glad that's been stamped out. But again, I think you can apply this to your businesses, uh, yeah, to the people you deal with in in the spaces you deal with. I think it's vital to you know set the standard. And I know most of our listeners would anyway, but again, don't don't lower your standard just because one client wants to push the parameters. It's just not worth it. It applies in the accounting industry too. We've had clients come across to us and we look at their tax return and go, oh, hang on, why, why'd you claim all this? Like, do you, did you actually spend that money on that? Do you have receipts? Oh, no, my accountant was fine with it though. He said it was cool. Well, he has, you know, he has, he said we, we could put that through. It's like, well, hang on, did, did you actually spend the money? Did you buy two grand worth of tools? Did you really drive your car 20,000 kilometers for work purposes only? Like they're those kind of things that, again, when it comes to self-regulation and integrity in business, um, you've got to set the standards and, and you've got to, from top down, all levels of the business need to apply those same standards and self-regulate, call each other out if you see something that makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable or you think, oh, not, not too sure about that. But yeah, whether it's accounting, mortgage broking, I mean, one of the biggest scary examples I heard, um, my dad called me up a few weeks ago and he said, 
plumber had been around at his house and on the way on the plumber was on his way out the door and he goes, can you smell that? And my dad's going, no. Nah. And he goes, oh, I reckon you've got a gas leak. He goes, hang on, mate, I better check this out. And the guy did a lap of the house, went out of the house and he's come out, taken my dad over to the gas meter and put the reader on and showed my dad there's a gas leak. I, ha- I, I legally now can't leave your property without turning off your gas. So he turned off my dad's gas, taped it all off and said, here's a quote for $5,200. I need to rewire your gas lines under your house so I can find the gas leak and, and I'll fix the gas leak for you for 5200 bucks." And my dad fortunately went, well, no worries, mate. Look, I'm going to call around and get some other quotes because I think 5200 is a bit of a sting considering you've just walked out of my house and sniffed a gas leak. Called me up. Fortunately, we were able to send one of our clients around who, again, acts with integrity and is a very good operator. Shout out to Paul Cavallo. Um, And he he went around and sure enough did a lap of the house and found at the hot water service, all he'd done was loosen the gas to the hot water service to then be able to show my dad that there was a gas leak write him up an invoice for 5,200 bucks. Um, and my dad actually called the bloke up and called him out on it and said, mate, I've actually got security footage of you by the side of the house loosening that pipe. You've deliberately caused a gas leak trying to trying to extort five grand out of me. And they end up getting a refund off this plumbing company who went, oh, no, no, shit, must be a misunderstanding. And I ended up looking at it online and finding multiple Google reviews of people saying the same story that these people are trying to fool people saying they smell gas. So how's that for not acting with integrity and trying to screw, you know, retirees and pensioners and people who maybe look like they can't look after themselves out of their hard-earned money? you got to call that out. Like mm. we had similar stuff with dad, people trying to drop off all this uh, paving stuff on his lawn and and then wanting to do the driveway. And Dad basically said, you can leave that stuff here and you can get out. (laughs) (laughs) But that's what they were doing. They were stinging. They were just coming in doing the paving and then charging and saying, you've got to pay. But um, that sort of stuff goes on more than we recognise out there. So we we know the people listening to this wouldn't be those type of people, but I think... It's important to set parameters for when you come across those type of people because they're the ones that are going to be asking for money in unusual circumstances or, you know, they're the ones you've got to really prep. And I always come back to, as a business owner, if ever you're unsure, if ever you're unsure, there's an easy way to resolve it. Just do the current affair test and Mm. you go, would I be happy for this decision to be on a current affair? So if you ever if you ever undecided on something or you're fifty fifty on something, just go to the current affair test. And if you think that would look poorly uh, with everyone knowing, then do not take that action. Do not take that action. I like that so, one. Yeah, he actually did threaten with a current affair too. He said he knew someone at uh, Channel Nine and he was going to get a current affair out to uh, suss out their business. And uh, very quickly there was a refund in his bank account. So. Um, <laughs> Well played, Dad. Well played. And uh, Marty, great, great example of uh, how integrity and uh, self-regulation uh, is really paramount and important in business. And um, yeah, for people to just be careful out there too. There's always someone out there that could potentially be trying to take advantage of you. And um, also, if you are working in a business somewhere or, or running a business, and somebody asks you to do something that you're not comfortable with, you got to say no, call it out and don't feel the pressure to do the wrong thing because it's not worth it. How it starts is how it ends. So make sure you start well and if it's not right it's not right move on game over